Yeah, still discussing cricket. The West Indies have been eliminated from tighter contention at the ICC Under-19 World Cup following a no result against Australia earlier on Friday. The match was abandoned after rain disrupted the West Indies innings 4.3 overs into their pursuit of 228 for victory. Having won the toss, the young Windies elected to field and limited the Aussies to 227 for 8 from their 50 overs with Nathan Edward claiming 3 for 32 and Isaiah Thorne 2 for 50. Sam Constas top scored for Australia with a well played 108. The Windies got to 24 for 2 when rain stopped play. The match was eventually called off, bringing an end to the semi final hopes of the Caribbean side, who ended on five points behind Australia and South Africa, who both finished on six. South Africa secured their spot after thrashing Sri Lanka by 119 runs. The West Indies youngsters were probably watching that game as rain teared in Kimberley. Let's get the thoughts of international cricket commentator Nikhil Utam Chandani. Nikhil, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. The, the young West Indians must be bitterly disappointed, not just that they are out of the World Cup, but because of how they have been eliminated from the World Cup and given the quality of the team they have won defeat but they're not in the final four. Yeah, definitely, Ricardo. I think every player and every team would take, you know, even if the West Indies did end up losing that game because they were 24 for two against a quality Australian bowling attack, I would still think they would rather have the opportunity to still fight it out. It was a team that we've seen sort of real character from, and I think it speaks well for what we have coming in the region. And just the fact that they've lost the one game, as you mentioned, beat a very good England side, who many had as favorites coming into the tournament. And then a Sri Lanka team, for me, that was the biggest standout. A Sri Lanka team in tough conditions with the ball spinning a lot, and they've got some quality spinners as well. So for me, I think it's a World Cup to take a lot of positives from, but they'll be devastated that they never really got the opportunity to, to determine their own fate. Yeah, and speaking about the positives, you know, even earlier today while preparing for this show, Nikhil, I thought about the journey of this under-19 team and I said to myself, you know, despite the rain, of course, deciding whether we make it or not, uh, there are so many different things for us to celebrate. And as we are in the rebuilding phase when it comes to the senior team, this is perfect because there are so many things for us to really celebrate both with bat and ball. So for me, some of the players that I was able to point out would be Jewel Andrew because that century that he scored, I think it's something for us as West Indians to be really, really happy about. And of course, there were other players that chipped in with half century. You spoke about the positives. What stood out for you? A few things, um, Mariah. I'll start with the fast bowling crop that we saw in this tournament. Um, Nathan Edward, for me, is a young star. I watched him today bowl the first seven overs consecutively. That's not easy. Um, to do, especially in those conditions, early morning. But the ball was swinging, and he can get the ball to swing. The key thing is that he gets the ball to come back into the right-hander, which, as we know, for a left-arm seamer, is the biggest weapon. But I also like the fact that you've got someone like Reniko Smith, who is set a different, hits the deck, and then Isaiah Thorne, who before the tournament, many said was the fastest bowler in that age group in the region, and he probably will play for CCC in our first class setup and a chance for him to develop. So I think those three seamers... Um, it bodes well for what we have to come and we're building in the region because our fast bowling has been sort of an area of deficiency. But not only the fact that they're bowling seam, but that they're getting close to that 135, 140 mark, and they're all very young, so can add a few yards of pace as well. So that'll be a big standout for me. I think Stefan Pascal's captaincy, just how aggressive he was in the field, but also with the bat in hand, that was a real glaring highlight for me. And I think he could have a real future leading in the Caribbean. Yeah, also, how important was it the opponents that the Windies were able to defeat? Because we spoke about that also on the show. We went up against Scotland, England and Sri Lanka and we walked away with victories. These are teams, you know, that you, they really had to work hard in order to defeat. And for me, again, that's another win because it shows as young players the fight and the, you know, the... They, the ability to come together as a team when they were in losing positions and overcome their opponent. And I tell you what, Maria, that South Africa team that's going to the semi-final, they were in immense danger against the West Indies. When Joel Andrew got that 100, 
Uh, it was Nathan Silly at the other end. And at that stage, I think they needed like 40 to win. Right. Before Silly was run out, they would have comfortably won that game. So had they won that, they would have probably been going to the semifinals and who would have known. But I think all in all, as you mentioned, the results, but not only that, the way that they fought sort of showed that character against quality opposition in not easy conditions for batting. I think those are the biggest positives. And I really hope we can find a way as a region to bridge the gap because we've lost a lot of players between that and the 19 to under 23. And I know the West Indies Academy is a big reason why we sort of have that now so we can develop that talent. But let's be real. There's guys in the academy now who will play first. class cricket will play Super 50. So we need to find a way that these under 19 guys who cannot play the next World Cup still can develop, still play competitive cricket and try to break in. So hopefully they can compete for a place in the academy as well. Yeah, and Nikhil, you just referenced how impressed you were with Pascal's captaincy. The catch he took today at Gully, was it? That was absolutely stunning, wasn't it? Yeah, that's been another thing, Lance. The fielding to me, um, I, I, we mentioned it on the last show, that's been a highlight uh, from this tournament. But if we think back to the successful West Indies teams when we won World Cups, our fielding was cut above the rest. And I think that's a real way, you look at the best T20 teams in the world, their fielding is what sort of separates them from the rest. If we can develop that culture within this group and the groups to come, I think it bodes really well. But that catch was is one of the best I've ever seen. Just the reaction time um, is never easy. And the ball was quite hard and it coming off the bat quite quickly as well. Yeah, and I did reference earlier on the week my pleasure to see four consecutive Windward Islands players captaining this West Indies under-19 team to a World Cup tournament, starting with Emmanuel Stewart. Then we saw... Akim August and Kimani Milius and now Pasco. Yeah, I don't know if you can still hear me, Lance, but basically there's some load shedding in South Africa, but I'm still here. Um, as you can see, this just came out. Yeah. yeah, I think the younger... You were, you were just... Give me that one again. That one started distracting <laughs> no, me. No, I, was, I, I, I had referenced early on in the week my, my pleasure to see yeah. the diversity of quality coming out of the West Indies yeah, and now yeah, yeah. four consecutive players from the Windward Islands um, Dominica, St. Lucia twice, and Grenada with Emmanuel Stewart, Akim August, and Kiman Emilius, and now Pascal, captaining the West Indies team to an under-19 World Cup. And uh, just showing that there's a lot of quality coming out of the Eastern Caribbean as well. And to be honest, Lance, I'll also build on that and I'll say, I think credit must be given to our under-19 setup regionally because I followed the Rising Stars under-19 tournament. They had the red ball section, they had the white ball section, and it was quite competitive. Then they had a 32-man camp where they narrowed it down to 18 in the end. But the fact that you have, as you said, so many teams competing, because you, you can think about years ago where the Wimmer Islands at times may never have really challenged, but they have they challenged to almost win that in an 18 tournament. So I think the fact that you have not only from the Windwards, but guys from Guyana chipping in, from Barbados, um, and then the Leeward Islands, Joel Andrew. And also the fact, I'll say that Joel Andrew played Liste cricket uh, for the Leeward Islands in that Super 50 Cup. So it's also showing that the under-19 talent is good enough to sort of challenge and break into the senior men's team. If we have more players getting that early exposure, I think when we get to under-19 World Cups and youth World Cups, we're going to be a serious force to be reckoned with. So I hope that this younger talent, similar to what we saw in the last World Cup with Ogis, Teddy Bishop, who's in the West Indies team now, I really hope we can sort of build on this and we can see these guys carrying over into that senior professional level. Yeah, well, Nikhil, we know that it's pretty close to your bedtime and we don't want another <laughs> lights out moment. So we're going to leave it there for today. And I'm sure we'll be catching up pretty soon to talk some more cricket. Get some rest, young man. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to a break. <laughs>